going on? Thanks for swinging by. I sure do appreciate it. If this is your first time with the channel, my name is Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Welcome to Fit and Fire. I have a special guest all the way from California. We've got Greg OG hey, from the OG's Danger Show. We're going to be doing some lever action stuff. We're going to be shooting some uh, some uh, pork butts. We're going to expire. They are expired pork butts. We yeah, would never, we would never, never waste actual food. actual food. Not at all. Not at all. And uh, we're we're trying to uh, just get a, uh, a I would say probably a beginner's tutorial for someone who is extremely inexperienced when it comes to lever actions uh, into you know what a 4570 can do. Uh, get some chronograph tests, uh, look at some 3030 stuff, and then uh, I've also got a 357 and a Marlin 1894 357. So I'm excited to try all of that stuff out and uh, just kind of get a, a better understanding of lever actions. Yeah, so, we're, we're all Marlins out here today, I think, yeah, aren't we? Yeah, aren't all, we? So, four, all four. Oh, no, no. Marlin, what, what's we're the, being what's told this? by the, hold on. Winchester, got a Winchester too. The production what, what, assistant is saying right now in my mic that and, uh, uh, we have a Winchester. Winchester, okay, okay, I, I'm getting that now too. So because we are uh, a diversity, uh, you're you're all about diversity here. Yeah, so yep, we do. And fun. then you know we also have, as always, uh, since we're in the backdrop of uh, Tarkov back there, we do have an AK with us. So uh, uh, I have the uh, the uh, the single round here in my pocket for for the suppressed AK. Anya may be making an appearance today. So uh, uh, with that, we'll get into it. So over the course of two days, Officer Greg and I were able to look at a number of different lever action rifles. And I was really excited for this. Unfortunately for us, we really struggled over these two days to put together some really decent content for you guys. Day one was plagued with very, very high winds, looking at about 22 miles an hour with wind gusts up to 40 miles an hour. Obviously it's Kansas, so that's kind of the lumps that you take living here. But <laughs> at the end of the day, uh, I was just excited to be out with Officer Greg and, and being able to take a look at a couple different lever action rifles. The first rifle that we started looking at was my Marlin 336 and 3030. And I have done some upgrades to it, adding the Midwest Industries m -lock rail to it and an XS Big Dot rail for an optic. So I was uh, really excited to get this out and take a look at, at a couple of different things. First and foremost, obviously, since I did put a red dot on this, I just wanted to try it out to see if I liked it or not and wanted to get it zeroed at about 50 yards. And again, really fought the wind on this. Uh, sitting on this um, kind of portable bench from Caldwell, I was really um, getting pushed around by the wind. Like I said, 40 mile an hour gusts, and it just just wasn't, <laughs> wasn't our day for sure. But uh, I was able to get uh, about six rounds on target, and ultimately, the grouping was not where I wanted to be. I, I honestly think that I'm going to have to start looking into an LPVO for what I want this rifle to do for me. But at the end of the day, at the very least, I got a grouping that would get me on target at least at 50 yards. And then as I started to do chronograph testing and um, kind of ballistic testing on pork shoulders, you know, go from there but as you can see that group is not where I want it to be for sure uh, a couple rounds uh, in close to each other but uh, again that wind pushed me around you can see it's really pushing that target around a bit so next up we wanted to go ahead and jump in on the uh, chronograph and uh, check to see what uh, the 3030 was doing first round was 2500 feet per second I was really excited about that but we kept on getting errors and uh, wanted to make sure I got at least four readings. So second reading blew that top thing off just from the shock of it, but got 2475 feet per second on that second shot. Third shot uh, ended up being uh, pretty decent as well. Got a good reading on there, it's 2527. Uh, then we are going to get the fourth shot here. We actually got two readings in a row, which is kind of surprising. <laughs> and uh, wanted to make sure I took my time and got a, a good round on the chronograph. That one ended up being 2543 
and then the final round unfortunately was an error and uh, that's just something that we really fought as well. We may not have had the chronograph as far away as we should have. With a average of 2,511 feet per second for the Hornady 160 grain FTX lever revolution, I was really impressed with that. The box was suggesting that we should be seeing 2,300 feet per second and we got well over 100, uh, actually 211 feet per second faster. So I'm happy with that because that's just going to translate into a higher energy rating. From there, we went to the Marlin 1894 chambered in 357 Magnum. I want to say a huge thank you to American Cash Exchange for loaning this rifle to us. It was just a beautiful, beautiful rifle. And the first ammunition that we tried was 165 grain hollow points. In 357 the first round got 1562 with the box rating saying 1250 so obviously a lot higher because of the longer barrel 1565 is the next reading that we got we also ended up with uh, 1598 as well on that third one Fifteen fifty-eight was the next reading that I got with an average of fifteen seventy feet per second, which uh, I was happy with. Obviously, a lot faster than what the box was saying at twelve hundred and fifty feet per second, but that's expected with a longer barrel. Then we went up to the one hundred eighty-five grain hollow points from Black Belt Ammunition. First round was nineteen o one with a projected 1300 feet per second on the box so that was pretty cool really sorry about all the shaky cam here but winds <laughs> was really tough to get good uh, pictures for you guys 1880 was that second reading 1867 was the third reading and um, ran into some errors so we went ahead and reloaded and got a few more readings as well 1845 And we saw the next reading at 1824. Uh, so fairly consistent, still getting a pretty wide deviation, but uh, not too bad. 1853 was the next reading. 1864 was this reading. And then one more, we ended up with uh, 1879. So pretty decent. Uh, average on that was going to be 1864. So really, uh, really did like uh, how much speed we were getting out of those rounds, even though they were rated for 1300 feet per second. From there, Officer Greg broke out his big boy, the uh, 1895 4570. And uh, let me tell you, this thing was a thumper. I was not expecting this to be uh, as punishing as it was. Me being put into this bench, it just rode my collarbone like you wouldn't believe and was just hammering my shoulder. I was not prepared for this one bit. Got a uh, couple of rant rounds down range with this and I uh, just wanted to get an idea of what it was like to shoot uh, one of these. And I can tell you that uh, <laughs> <laughs> if I had to uh, choose between a 3030 and a 4570, I'm definitely going to go with the 3030 all day long. <laughs> After that we switched over to the uh, 1895 Trapper which is going to be a shorter barreled lever action and just wanted to get an idea of what it was like to shoot both of these before we started doing some more testing with these on day two so a lot of fun uh, like I said tenderized my shoulder pretty good and uh, I was pretty much done after we got done shooting this guy right here ultimately ended up putting about 12 rounds down range between these two rifles and uh, man that was enough for me <laughs> So on the, on the 
big one. Can you tell where they're hitting versus where they're aiming? Uh, it looks like they're pretty low. Okay. From there, it was time to bring Anya out to have some fun. This has been a, an AK that I've been working on for the last uh, month or so, and I really wanted to get her out and get some suppressed 762 by 39 out through her, and uh, she ran great. Running 196 brown bear through it, and uh, really did have a lot of fun. Greg's having fun with his drone and then jumped in on shooting Anya as well. Day two was another day of challenges. We uh, really fought audio issues this time and the wind, but we were able to look at a number of different submissions to the OG's Danger Show in 4570. Got uh, Hefe, the cameraman, out to run a few rounds through the 1895. He was really interested in seeing what that was like and really enjoyed it as well. Ran some lighter weight bullets on the uh, trapper as well, and that felt a lot better than it did the first day. <laughs> From there, Officer Greg wanted to do some chronograph testing of a few different uh, submissions to his channel. I'm really surprised that speeds and velocities we were getting out of these massive bullets. Another one over 500 grains really thumping too. Almost 2,000 feet per second on a 325 grain 45 seven. That was really, really cool. From there, wanted to jump in on some meat test, I guess. So, looked at shooting a pork shoulder. Exit wounds. That's some good stuff. So underneath that rubber tip, you've actually got a little bit of a hollow point. That's probably why we're getting a lot of that damage. Yep. And then naturally switching over to the 1894 and 357. Oh, I'd say you hit it. Yep. Let's go take a look at the damage. So these were the 3030s, and that's that 357. Yeah, you can tell the difference in the holes even. Yep. And then backside, 
yeah can't really tell where which one's which but it's it's pretty much doing what it's needing to do there yeah uh, I've got these Fioki 150 grain uh, lead tip round nose lead tip and uh, I just interested to see what it would do in comparison to the three uh, or to the uh, 3030 FTX round so uh, I'm gonna try to place it in a different spot and see what I can do as far as getting better effects on target so let's see what happens here Wow, that actually uh, that made that meat jump. That looked a little bit more like the 4570 impact. Yeah, so I hit a little low there. This is the 3030, 30, 30, 357, and then there's the uh, that 150 grain. Did you see that energy of that yeah. thing? And look at the damage out back. Yeah, and that's probably because it's going a lot faster. Uh, wow. Gnarly, as the kids like to say <laughs> in the 80s. The Push shock. Down, yeah. yeah. We get that a lot of, with uh, gallon jugs of water. It'll shove the table down and sometimes break the table. Don't put a piece of fiberglass panel down. So yeah. uh, I don't know if we shattered that. Yeah, look at that. That is the bone in there. I don't even know where the entrance is on this thing. It was just such a violent, yeah, violent impact. It kicked it right off the table, right there. Was, yeah, so it hit it low. That was my fault. That's probably why I skipped it at the back of the table. But you can see here the difference in calibers. 30-30. This is why people use 30-30 in the U.S. to hunt deer because you're not destroying the entire piece of meat. You're absolutely doing the damage you need to do to stop an animal of that size. But over here, we stopped an animal the size of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and uh, not a lot of damage inside. Uh, one of the interesting things that I really loved about today is not only trying uh, a 4570 because I've never shot a 4570 before, and, and probably won't again. <laughs> probably won't again. Uh, I will show you guys a uh, a uh, little snippet of my shoulder uh, from yesterday, just from yesterday, not even today. Yeah, yesterday we shot what a ten rounds. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. ten rounds, and uh, oh, man. Mark, Mark's shoulder took a beat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. But uh, being able to see the 4570 uh, in effects on target you know with those pork butts and stuff like that the uh the 30 30 and even the 357 a couple different rounds from 30 30 as well uh really kind of opened my eyes to not only the power of a 4570 but also what a uh 30 30 can do and 357 so uh, a lot of different things that uh, people can consider for hunting personal protection or whatever they need uh these rifles to do for them i think uh E either one of them, all three of them, would do just fine oh, yeah. in, in any situation. Again, be careful if you're going to use a 4570 uh, for home protection because unless you need to shoot a bad guy in your neighbor's house or the house on the other side of your neighbor's house, uh, you're probably a little a little overkill on that 4570. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> it could do the Indiana Jones thing where there's like three bad guys in a yeah, row. Yeah, yeah, take them all down, <laughs> shoot a bad guy through your refrigerator <laughs> yeah, that's exactly on the other right. side of your car, through your engine block. But uh, we had a good time out here making this video. It's awfully cold here in central Kansas. Uh, yeah, Mark. It, it's funny. Yesterday was in the 60s. Today is probably 45, you know, so. Yeah. Yesterday was windy as hell. We could barely stand up. Today, less wind, but colder, and it's starting to drizzle. drizzle. So yep. uh, we're going to head back into town, but we appreciate you guys watching. All right. And we will catch you in the next video. That's right. With that being said, we'll go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so much for all your uh, support of the channel. If you're not a subscriber to OG's Danger Show, 
swing on by. I'll have links all over the place for you guys to check them out. And, uh, and I want to apologize ahead of time too if you don't like the show. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's great. I absolutely love it. But like I said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Thank you so very much. As always, freedom through strength. Here comes a high five. Catch you guys later. Bye, y'all.